All right, everyone. <coughs> it is me, Johnson Chan. Uh, I feel a little bit under the weather for some reason. I think it might just be because uh, I haven't been fully getting a lot of sleep. All right. Part of the problem is I'm working so hard to try to lose weight that's causing me to do a little bit of nighttime snacking. Uh, about you know, I still wait. I still eat only like. Maybe a hundred calories, and it's usually worth the carbs, like ice cream or maybe the cereal slash chips, right? Not too many calories, right? Because, uh, but it start it, it does affect your ability to sleep because it like I guess messes up your body cycle or whatever. So I'm still gonna try to figure out because the pr thing is, is like the reason why I'm snacking is because I'm not eating enough during the you know during my little fasting period. So um, I don't know. I'll just have to eat a little more protein or something. So uh, I think that's why my body is starting to get a little weird, uh, tired. But I had an all right night's sleep last night too. I think I wound up sleeping for like a total of eight hours, a little bit more than that. You know, but my body really does need like nine hours. So uh, I don't know. Did I even? I think I did this yesterday. But thanks to the one person that subscribed. So you know, we're growing a little steadily. Um, I'm kind of surprised anyone even subscribes this much, simply because of. Uh, how little views it gets on YouTube, but yeah, I guess you never really know. All right, so anyway, uh, I didn't even bother checking the news because I really do like this format better. Just read the headlines and just see what I think. So, um, so Bitcoin searches for last week is at eight, so it's not too bad. Uh, it's still a little low, but maybe the, the normies are fine, finally starting to get uh, more interested. So, uh, actually, I got this little notification here. Oh yeah, so before we start uh been listening more you know jesse lee peterson and um i don't know like what did i i mean i could barely retain anything but it was something about uh i think oh yeah the reason why is because uh he wasn't able to finish his point because he ran out of time but he said like you can't really change your life but um you, you just live and let go the problem is um he, he didn't get to the live and let go part uh he focused more on the you know, he asked a lot of people how they change their lives, especially Christians. And he, he said that they notice that they get a better job or, you know, they meet better people or something like that. And he actually said uh, there's a problem with that because that's all material stuff, but not the spirit stuff. And then that's where I start getting a little confused. But I, th I think I kind of get it. I mean, I'll have to, I'll have to maybe, you know, uh, read it more because I literally just listened to it. And because he ran out of time uh th there's a lot of gaps in there um and, and then he segued into uh asking people in the audience like do they still have anger right and it was it was actually a, a, a either no anger or 100 percent. right there was no in between like it was very specific about that he was asking this guy if he had anger and he said like 99 98 percent and then jesse's like Okay, so do you still have anger, right? And he just kept asking that same question, right? And he, you know, and then the point was, even if you have a little bit, then you never let it go, right? And then, uh, and and then as long as you do that, you know, you, you stay you stay further away from God. So uh, you know, a lot lot of interesting stuff for me to uh, ponder. But obviously, we're I'm I'm just gonna have to listen to more. Um, oh, you know what? Maybe what I should have done was ah crap. Um, are you where you should be in life? Why you couldn't sleep? Oh man, I didn't save it. Uh, let's see. You can't change your life, Jesse. YouTube. Let's see if I can actually get that clip back. Oh great. Um, because I misspelled the word change. No, oh, actually, you know I should do it on Brave so you guys can see. Um. Jesse Lee Peterson, you can't change your life, live, and let go. Let's see if this will work. Uh, I'm going to have to go on YouTube to do this. Oh, wait. I think it's right here. Ah, perfect. Yeah, this is the one I was listening to. Now, hopefully he linked to uh, the whole thing. Oh, okay. Oh, that was the whole thing, and he ran out. This one, this one was actually, this one was actually, um, what you call it? This was actually, 
the whole thing. Huh. Okay. So uh, I guess I'll just have to just ponder on it. So I guess that's more research for you and me. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that's, I probably was listening to other stuff, but that was just, I don't know. It was just mostly him talking with other women, like doing, you know, you know, uh, you know, bad, bad stuff. Uh, some admitted it, you know, so which I was cool. And then others were just like very defensive. You're angry SJW types. It's like, oh, man. Uh, he did have a pretty funny anecdote about him going to the uh, the women's march, like shortly after Trump got elected, and then he went up to the homosexuals that were, you know, also in joining the protest and all that stuff. And then he was just asked, just went up to people and asked him, "Oh, why are you protesting?" Right? And then you know they give him an answer, but they, but then he said, but then he noticed like they didn't actually have a specific problem with, uh, with it. He's like, "Yeah, he just, uh, you know, he just got in office. He hasn't actually done anything uh, to you yet." Right, if he intends to do something like that, and and then and then that's and then you know some people are like, oh, that's a good point. And then there was this uh, lesbian woman that like was getting very angry at Jesse and was telling other people uh, not to talk to Jesse. And then he said half the people uh, stopped talking to him, and others did. And then um, uh, and then for some reason the lesbian person that was following him around, all angry looking, like just started crying after a while. And then Jesse just went up to her. And asked, why are you crying? All right, and and then he talked about something else afterwards. I, I don't I don't remember. But his point was, people will always act and look tough, but then like if you basically confront the truth, then you'll find that they're really not. Uh, they're basically cowards or something like that. So uh, that was, so that's actually pretty interesting. <clears throat> yeah. You know, which is why Jesse is probably much better suited for that kind of work than me, because I would probably have my ego, which is bad, and then, like, I would get kind of angry, <laughs> and that's very bad, so. Uh, but then I also know that, so that's why I don't go to those situations, because then it's like, oh, you know what, you know, I, sh I should just stay away. And then just look at it on the computer and then just laugh or whatever. So, well, and then also try to improve my life, so, so that I don't have those issues in the future. So Bitcoin does is at 63.3 percent, 24-hour volumes at 145.28 billion. This is actually higher than normal. Wow. All right. So Bitcoin was actually up last night, up around I think 10,200. That's what it was before I went to bed. And then now this morning it finally dipped a little bit. So now it's back up to 9,900 after going down. So uh, so it's clearly obvious to me that there's a lot of profit taking going on. Uh, that's all that it is. Uh, the equity markets are up its standard amount. Okay, so not too bad there. Um, so let's see, Bitcoin, 9,900. Uh, Litecoin, $74.79. So yeah, so basically everything's down uh, from yesterday's highs uh, and even yet last night's highs. Um, Let's see, dog coin. So dog coins at 375.5 million market cap. So eh, not too bad, but wow, uh, it's, it's down 7%. Uh, yeah, that is some major profit taking. Well, I guess better now than later because the longer it takes for the thing to go down after going up a lot, the, the, harder, the harder the downward trend, right? Because, you know, like that typical saying in physics, right? For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. Um, in crypto markets, uh, it's actually amplified. So if it goes up like you know, hundred grand, expect like a fifty, sixty thousand dollar drop uh, afterwards. So uh, you know the swings get very, very powerful, right? But that's why we like cryptocurrency. Because how else are you going to turn five hundred dollars into like ten million dollars, right? You're going to have to need that kind of crazy swing and get in at the bottom. And then kind of just make a rough guess estimate of where the top is uh, based on market forces and like uh, worldwide sentiment, which is why we always check this, right? The Google trend data. I mean, this is for America. Uh, but if I do worldwide, uh, it's pretty much kind of like the same thing. Actually, we should probably set it to worldwide, actually. Um, let's, yeah, let's set it to worldwide. So that means we'll probably have to adjust our uh, values a little bit. So, uh, and of course, worldwide interest was at its peak when Bitcoin was at its peak. And then of course, subsequently started crashing as the markets were crashing, which is why I like this, because this is what you want to be looking at. And what, and rich people definitely have more advanced ways of measuring this. 
So that's how that's how I know that they'll also start dumping because the rich always move ahead first. Then the normies come in and like lambs to the slaughter, you know, lose everything because they bought at the top because they think, oh, you know, we're missing the boat, we're missing the boat. But the problem is they've missed the boat, right? They were supposed to get in now when everything doesn't look right, right? You don't want to be these idiots uh, that are basically not searching for it. Like these these few people in the world where they consist of this 11 interest for last week, those are the people that are going to be have a very good chance of making it if they make the right decisions. So, uh, yeah. Um, oh, and that's the other thing too, before we move on. Um, yeah, the other thing I was also learning about today was... Um, uh you know he was asking he was answering a question from a woman about how she has like a lot of things she wants to do but she doesn't want to let go of uh her, her pizzeria business uh jesse just said like oh yeah that's just your ego it's like you know just just focus on like one thing and uh try to let go of the other stuff right you know um and then you are interested in other things just set just relax and you'll eventually set aside some time for it if you you know let it go to god but he basically said, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, uh, don't believe you're a, well, he actually specifically said, don't believe you're smart. And then, and then ultimately it was all because it's the devil and the ego working through you just to kind of screw you up. Because obviously if you keep doing all these random things, you're not going to get anywhere. Uh, and that's true for me, uh, especially because I actually have the talent to do everything. But then now I'm trying to settle down on it. And of course, I try to use God as best as I can to focus on what I really want to do. All right. Because I have a pretty strong idea of what I want to do. Right. I like entertainment. I like doing, you know, this kind of stuff. Eventually, I like to have some kind of, you know, radio show. It won't be as crazy and hardcore as like Joe Rogan, where he does that every day, I think. Right. Me, you know, I just like, you know, once a week, twice a week. That's probably good enough. Right, and I do my daily videos, and I run my actual business, right? The real estate empire, the video game stuff, you know. And, of course, you know, the movie or script, actually, in this case, for the video game. Because <clears throat> now I, now, cause now that I'm becoming more aware, and now that I have to figure out the limitations and all the stuff I have to deal with, you know, I'm going to be changing things up a bit. Because I was supposed to be doing this as my last entertainment project but now it's going to be the first one so you know that's going to involve some changes and of course you know yeah and now it's going animation rather than um real live actors so like now there'll be some adjustments but you know uh luckily uh you know because i could do everything i can you know easily handle and figure it out you know eventually so you know what matters is you know do i actually understand the bible right like do i really truly understand it <clears throat> so uh that, that that's probably the only thing that's ultimately going to matter anyway so uh let's see dog coin. oh yeah so that's the dog coin up there uh i thought this thing was going to say zillow cause like huh the, the real estate zillow now has its own crypto <laughs> so steam is at 20.05 cents so eh, not too bad it's pretty good <clears throat> and uh whatchamacallit <clears throat> yeah, my little sickness is starting to kick in again. Uh, I did pop a vitamin D pill. I might have to take another vitamin D, you know, and then I'll have 10,000 IUs of this stuff in me. All right, so, yeah, I mean, I think in, like, I don't know, maybe in May, I'll probably stop tracking this, all right? Because if we can't short the, these cryptocurrency stocks, cryptocurrency stocks, then it, it, it's pretty useless. And of course, GMC is still down. Uh, Mitch was on, fi was finally able to uh, set aside some time to try to fix the block explorer. So we installed the new version of it, but there seems to be a problem because uh, it's fully synced, right? As you can see down here, and it's got the connections. <coughs> but the problem is the uh, explorer is not populating data. And then right now, Mitch is kind of busy doing stuff, so I already sent him a message. Once he gets a little bit of free time, he could probably take a look at it. I'm pretty sure the problem is pretty simple for him to fix, though, so it shouldn't be too bad. All right. Because, uh, again, it is a new version of the Explorer, so there's probably, like, a syntax change in the, I don't know, PHP code or whatever it is. So, uh, yeah, so JMC coin should eventually be back pretty soon. But, yeah, for now, it's at 3 to 4. 
Uh, not too bad. Uh, four four coin. I mean, because everything, because before what was happening was all coins were going down as Bitcoin was going up. So that basically means everyone was dumping to get Bitcoin, and then now everyone's doing profit taking. So you know, this obviously has an effect on four oh four. You know, basically it just slows down its price recovery. But yeah, it's basically at like eleven to twelve, maybe up. To, and it, from the way it looks, clearly thirteen. So I don't know. I'm still waiting at like. You know, 17 or 21. A little bit of my orders are in here somewhere. Um, but if I really feel like I need some money now, I'll put, maybe I could do 12 or even 13. But the problem is, if I do 13, I might as well just, you know, wait for 14 or 15. So it's it's like that never-ending cycle. Uh, but we'll see. But yeah, you know, if you look at this buy support, yeah, it's getting even stronger for 404. So we definitely have found like a price floor, and that's what we want, right? You know, wh where is the bottom, right? Well, that's where it is. Uh, two by two is at 67 to 68. Um, I don't think someone actually dumped and took out that guy's thing. I think he just simply removed, removed his bunny <clears throat> because the, uh, I don't feel like hitting this button, but the two by two coin thing is now down. Oh, actually it's down here. Uh, let me see. This had, see, I can't even read what this volume even says. Yeah, I'm just gonna have to take a guess then. Um, yesterday was the ninth. Excuse me. Um, actually, yeah, I think we covered this yesterday. This was yesterday's numbers. Yeah, so the guy took off his order. So he still wants two by two coin, but he's not buying as much as he want, uh, would like to. So, all right, still pretty stable. <clears throat> Actually, yeah, I guess maybe it's a good thing I'm going to cut today's video kind of short. I'm starting to lose my voice here. 4184 to 5200 Satoshis of a dog coin for a compound coin, which is kind of shocking. I actually see people buying. Uh, not at all. Yeah, not at all. <laughs> all right, so basically it's still down here. So that's the price floor, but still, you know, at least, you know, getting something. All right, uh, Bitcoin takes a dive after the longest daily winning run since blah, blah, blah. Okay, thanks, stocks probably better risky just for performance than Bitcoin. Um, I don't know, what is Fang? Now, I never even heard of the, this. <clears throat> Actually, this is a good time for me. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, launch your coins, blah, blah, blah. All right, so there's, okay, so their argument is, you know, FANG is the acronym for like big tech Silicon Valley, but we already know exactly decentral. The word central does not even apply here. So this article is retarded, okay? Because if you're on Facebook, well, guess what? Now they have full control of your money. Like you've you've changed your money control from the U.S. government, aka the central banks, to Silicon Valley. Like the like people like ugh, like this is why I get a little annoyed. Well, because I gotta try not to get angry, but this is very bad. Don't listen to this article. All right, you do if you do what this idiot is saying, then you've just handed over your freedom and sovereignty to Silicon Valley. You know, Facebook, Apple, Google, uh, Twitter, whatever. And uh, yeah, that's very bad. You don't do that, all right? The whole point of Bitcoin cryptocurrency is so that we have actual honest money that is 100% decentralized, all right? That's the whole point, all right? It's, it's always, it always comes down to this, truth versus evil, right? Good versus evil, right? You know, when, when you hand your shit over to big tech, you know, that's evil, all right? And, and they're, you know, controlling you, and which is also evil. So just don't get involved. Don't let them take your shit. Right, because the guard could take it, take all your stuff through the IRS. Well, what is big tech going to do? They're going to take away all your Amazon gadgets and turn, shut everything off. And oh, we don't like you, so we're not going to let you uh, bank with you uh, anymore. You can't use our crypto, and then you have no more money. Then you're homeless. Then what? All right, you know you can't rely on the U.S. government currently as it is to actually do what they're supposed to, which is regulate big tech, like. <clears throat> Even back in the days when Bill Gates and Microsoft were getting sued for antitrust, right? It actually happened. Nowadays, they're in bed with the U.S. government censoring everybody, right? Like, they're all corrupt and evil, right? And I'm hoping someday we can actually 
put a lot of these stupid fucks, you know, in uh, in prison, right, or something like that. You know, one can only hope. Uh, which is why they're not going to let Bernie Sanders win the Democrat nomination because you know he's actually going to clean house uh, in, in his angry far left communist way, of course. <coughs> Bitcoin platform block reveals plan to disrupt, blah, blah, blah. Binance coin rises on the day. Bitcoin fails to sustain. Okay, so it looks like just mostly idiots just talking about the price uh, ups and downs. Okay, so I'm not even going to bother. So no news here. All right, we saw this on the Google News thing. Uh, Ethereum leads $1 billion milestone and push for decentralization of global finance. A total volume locked. Okay, so that's just more. Eh, crypto shares of XRP pose for major move. Uh, wasn't this from... No, that's from, that's today. Yeah, I thought I could have swore this article was written yesterday. Inflation hedge Bitcoin, because I, I think we read something similar. Inflation hedge Bitcoin up 40% 2020. Heads halfway to all-time high. I'm trying, I'm trying to remember... Yeah, I mean, something similar did happen in the 2016-2017 bull run, right? It went back to its previous high and then got ready to, like, torpedo to all-time, you know, new highs. Uh, Jared Banks requested custody to Bitcoin. Uh, government official in Jared confirmed that several banks have filed a request. Okay, so we actually want to read that. Uh, Buffett sees Bitcoin as a store of fear, not a store of value. Eat. So it says e toros yoni asia well buffett did not say that so okay all right ah uh, this is a really ugly thumbnail i do like this green one but i guess we'll just use this ugly thumbnail later all right so german okay so what's going on here government officials in germany confirmed that several banks have filed a request to launch a digital asset custody business oh okay so they just want to be like coinbase and the uh, exchanges like that uh they've received over 40 applications from parties interested in offering crypto custody services blah 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 germany's updated money laundering act provokes banks and other local financial institutions to provide managed traditional securities and digital assets like bitcoin ethereum and xrp digital currency has become increasingly popular due to the past blah 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 we don't need a history lesson the german authorities for formulating regulations after a european union introduced its Fifth Anti-Money Laundering Directive, which requires crypto-related companies to ensure that their operations comply with your KYC. That's why Crex had to do something like that, which I'm pretty sure they don't actually enforce. They just say that just so, <clears throat> they just say that so that like the, you know, the European Union uh, doesn't bother them. Uh, the market is going faster than the Federal Ministry of Finance has predicted. This is both a blessing and a curse. The high demand for crypto custody licenses shows that companies are increasingly adopting blockchain tech, and this also is a result of new legislation. Boffin has set the 2020 November deadline for such firms to establish compliance procedures for storing blah, 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 blah. Okay. So this is good. So everybody's starting to even, so now even, um, not all banks, obviously, but a lot of other banks, you know, see the writing on the wall and they now want to get into, um, cryptocurrency, but they don't want to do it to speculate. In this case, they just want to hold your crypto and then probably charge you some sort of fee. So that's better than nothing. All right. But it's also, it's also risk free, right? Because it doesn't matter what the price of crypto is, right? Goes up a lot or goes down a lot. The bank will just hold it for you and then charge you your their fee so they get their money no matter what happens uh and i'm guessing you know if you don't pay like their fee i don't know what i don't know how they're going to charge the fee right maybe it's like 200 bucks a year or a very small percentage va value or something but probably more just like a fixed value right i guess they'll just say well we'll seize your crypto if you don't pay the fee well obviously they're going to but obviously a customer is just going to pull out their money pay whatever final fees there are and then you know that's that so, uh, um, all right. So, but that's pretty good because if we can get something like this combined with Hester Pierce's, uh, you know, new change to crypto, like you have three years to turn your coin into decentralization, that's perfect. Like, you know, so, uh, you know, we'll be more vulnerable to ICOs, but we don't care because, you know, we're, we're not doing ICOs, right? And people should not be buying ICOs anyway because most of them are scams. And if they are an ICO, well, they could file the proper paperwork with the SEC or whatever equivalent. So, 
it's going to be pretty good. So even if uh, Donald Trump wins re-election this year, um, I think Nick Fuentes has said, well, I mean, it's been the weekend, so he hasn't obviously said anything. And I haven't really been listening to, uh, you know, a lot of his late last week's America First things. So mostly because a lot of it was also the Democrat debate. I didn't even know they were having one. So it's like, yeah, I mean, it's the same old tired stuff. Uh, what you would call it? Nick Fuentes has said he's changed his mind from 50-50 to like Trump's going to win overwhelmingly. Mostly because the Democrats are just completely out of control crazy and like they're going after bernie sanders too so like that's alienating like 25 percent of the actual american democrat voter base all right you know so people are gonna get mad <clears throat> but with that being said they said the same shit about hillary clinton and people still came out to vote for hillary clinton anyway so it, yeah i mean the democrats uh you know they're party of betas so they'll always just take it up the ass right no matter what so that, that's what I've learned. Uh, because they actually hate Trump and conservatives even more. So that's what they do. Right? That's what they're good at. And uh, it's very satanic and it's very evil. But, you know, we're going to do, right? You know, conservatives, you know, they're less, they're less problematic. But they still have lots of problems and evil too. So, you know, that's actually where I'm going to be coming in. And it's also how I'm going to start looking into... Because that's actually also was supposed to be a big focus of my show. That's now going to be like basically the lore for my video game. Uh, the problem, the, one of the problems that I'm having is, you know, the good guys, right, in the show are pretty fleshed out, right? But the problem is I'm not entirely sure how I want to portray the bad guys. Because I don't want it to be like a, you know, a, a linear black versus white kind of thing. I want some, I want a lot of, I want a decent amount of gray in between, you know. So, um yeah, it's, uh, it's something for me to think about. Because part of the problem is I'm just not that cruel, <laughs> right? But, you know, I've seen something like that. So I have to try to figure out how it'll, how it'll work. Anyway, if you like what you saw, read or heard, hit the like button, the follow button, or subscribe button. <clears throat> from wherever you're watching this from. Or on my YouTubes at youtube.com forward slash the lemon factor BTC. Uh, smash that subscribe on the right hand side of this page and then uh, yeah let's just see if we can grow the channel because you know whatever uh, alright so I'm honestly done for the day um, I've got to actually lift weights because I was having a trouble sometimes like did I lift weights yesterday or did I not because I have so much crap floating around my head and I gotta do stuff and then at the same time I'm learning programming and I've got to like relax so that like my brain can absorb the info um, so, uh, yeah, now I'm actually starting to get ready to actually make a game, right? Found, I found a pretty good guy that made the graphics for this game, and I actually like this game, All right? You know, it's uh, coming out a lot. Uh, well, they're still streaming it, right? So it's actually, you know, I mean, like, I just want, like, some sort of pl something decent looking that's a placeholder, and then eventually when, like, the game gets big enough and it's very, you know, you know, making, you know, good money or whatever. I can ultimately upgrade from something like this to, because this is, I think, pixel art, right? I want the 2D to actually look like, you know, like a pretty professional AAA grade thing. Uh, but that's going to be very expensive and more importantly, not necessary at this point in time. Because again, we don't know if the game's going to work. I know in my heart that it will work. Um, because ultimately, as I realized, you can have all the marketing in the world, but if your product sucks, then, then it doesn't matter, right? Because here, JMC, 404, and even 2x2, they have all had the proper marketing for a long time, especially JMC coin, because I've been pushing this thing since I, we, I created it with Mitch, like years ago at this point, right? But what's the problem? There's no use case. So in that case, so in that particular example, there's uh, the product sucks, right? Our pro I mean, our product is fundamentally okay, but it's not complete. You know, it needs a use case and it cannot be gambling, right? You know, so what? So, okay, and we'll do a video game, right? You know, because I know exactly what I'm going to do in my game. There's going to be, I still have to finalize the mechanics of this, but there's going to be like salvage where you can break down items, right? Because I need to figure out a way to get rid of items in the game because you're creating a lot of items, right? You know, the inflation problem. Because inflation doesn't affect just in-game currency. It also affects items. So I think what I'm going to do is every single item will probably be broken down into like salvage modules. I'm just going to call those salvage modules JMC coin module, 404 coin module, and 
you know, two by two coin module and all that stuff. And then, you know, that'll basically create a lot of uh, free marketing for these cryptos, right? And eventually, once the game is, you know, relatively playable, right, and I could start charging some kind of like, you know, um, microtransaction stuff, right? Yeah, and then I can eventually, you know, hook these actual cryptos into the game. So the only downside is people might get a little confused. So, uh, but you know, I, I think it'll be okay because if you're using cryptocurrency, you're you're already probably smart enough to understand what you're doing. So, uh, also it'll also be separate. And I think to solve that problem, I'll make the salvage no trade. Like you cannot trade it. It's just the number that shows up, like a actual, um, like in some video games, like Alvin Online or. Maybe Diablo 3, it's been a while since I played it, but basically people cannot loot the money from you. It just stays there, and then when you die, you know, the game just takes a little bit out of your whatever. All right. But uh, the point is, you can't really, uh, uh, it, it just stays in your account. So that's basically what, you know, uh, the modules in my game will do. And, you know, we'll get free branding for these cryptos, and then we'll be, uh, we'll be Tamaguchi. So anyway, uh, I did the sellout mode, so uh, enjoy the rest of your day or night. Uh, I will see you all in tomorrow's video, and uh, yeah, a lot of stuff to think about, a lot of stuff to learn, but, you know, uh, best time to start is actually yesterday. The second best time to start is right now, so. Uh, and then the third best time is to do it tomorrow if you're actually honest about doing it tomorrow and you're not lying and procrastinating. So, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, see you all tomorrow. Thanks. And uh, yeah, um, I don't know. Oh, yeah. What's going to happen with this? I actually don't know. Like, um, I think it'll probably eventually go back up, right? Because I've seen this like a million times. Right now, it's just in a profit-taking mode. So whenever the rich people uh, don't feel like taking any more profits, this crypto will go up. Because literally, I don't see any news, which is good. No news is always good news, right? At least when it comes to financial stuff, so... Anyway, uh, see you all tomorrow. Thanks. Johnson Chan, uh, JMC Coin, 404 Coin, and this is not a very attractive looking uh, thumbnail, but eh, whatever.